today is about partnerships, the benefits that we can get from them, not for only us as Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islanders, but for the wider community, because at the end of the day, if we, we need to all prosper from, from things, because if we don't... <laughs> if we don't all prosper together, then, then nothing will be achieved. Okay, welcome and hope you have a wonderful day. Here in this part of Australia, uh, we have the most remarkable example of the ingenuity that provided a foundation for one of Australia's earliest settled societies. And this is a society that was built around traditional knowledge and building a traditional aquaculture system. I'm Arlene Alberts. I'm a Gilgar Gundich woman. Um, and this place here is precious, really precious to me. Denise, tell us about this area and why it's so important to your people. Okay, this area is part of the Budjabin landscape, which is the lava flow from the Man Equals volcano. On the landscape, there's a number of Aboriginal sites, traditional um, fish traps systems, uh, weirs, channels, the remains of traditional stone houses. People lived close by the water, the wetlands. The wetlands have the eels, the fish, the bush tucker, so it was just like this, living next door to the supermarket. This site, Budge Bin, was put on because it, it shows an extraordinary sophistication in Aboriginal society. Uh, about 5,000 BC, so older than the pyramids. What's happening with the eels? Are they coming? Are they, are they still flowing through this landscape? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah there's still, you, you can fish just down here, you know, and catch eels. And plus, um, fairly big salmon or, or uh, trout. You know, the young fellas go out and get me a feed every now and again. I'm, it's too cold for me, but <laughs> not a problem. Once a month, at least. Peter Garrett, what have you been tucking into for your bush tucker selection? I'm having uh, eel pasta here, Michael, which is absolutely delicious, and I've had some kangaroo as well. Yeah. And uh, I always like it if I get a chance to eat a bit of bush tucker food. Does it take you back to some of those early tours with the oils when you were through Central Australia? Yeah, I, wasn't, uh, I think when we were trying to get it uh, organised ourselves, I'm not sure it was quite as tasty as this, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's fantastic to see the spread that they put on spewed. What you got there, Morty? Oh, well, I was standing here listening to today, so I've just started a fish trap. Small hole in the bottom, of course it will catch the larger ones. The smaller fish will go through into the next swamp, grow some, there'll be a net at the next end of the next swamp, so again, the larger fish are caught, the smaller ones left to go through. So that happens all down along this lava flow. The whole lava flow has been engineered to be a food producing factory almost. Understanding sustainable land management from, from traditional owners is, is something that private landowners are going to have to have to come and listen to because we can't keep going the way we're going. The whole of Australia can't keep going. Not with climate change where we're in the middle of that now it's not going to go away this is not a drought this is not going to rain's not going to come back to the same level it did 10 20 years ago otherwise i mean where do we go where do we go when we muck up australia where do we go when we can't live here no more more you've woven that little beginning of a basket there in the space of about 10 minutes flat this is a very small one so i would use this for a coaster now <laughs> <laughs>